So this is kind of taking a, a jump off of what you did in math two and then doing something similar, but doing it using the unit circle. So instead of doing application problems and using the calculator to solve a trig equation, we're gonna use the unit circle to solve a trig equation, which means we're only gonna be dealing with specific numbers that happen to be on the unit circle. Um, and this is gonna be kind of similar to what I said uh, with the proofs where uh, in pre-calc you would study the same thing, you would just do it in more depth and it would be with problems that are more difficult. So we're gonna have kind of like an intro to stuff that you would potentially see uh, in pre-cal. So let's go ahead and look um, at the first couple problems. So we're going to solve, and whenever you solve a trig equation, there's always um, several times that answer could happen because of the idea of coterminal angles. So like pi sixth isn't the only um, answer. Like pi six is like, yeah, that's the, that answer in that moment. But then pi six is the same thing as uh, 13 pi six which is the same thing as 25 pi 6, which is the same thing as mm, math, 37 pi 6. You could just like keep adding a full circle and it's the same answer because that's how coterminal angles work. So whenever you solve trig equations, they're always going to tell you um, if they want you to find all solutions or if they want you to find the answers that are on the unit circle or if they want you to find answers from negative 2 pi to 2 pi or something like that. They're always going to tell you an interval to look at. And so we're going to use the interval from 0 um, to 2 pi is what we're going to do. So when it says solve on 0 to 2 pi, that means just find the answers that are on the unit circle. Don't look for any more answers. So don't look for coterminal angles. Don't find any repetitions of answers. Just find the answers that are on the unit circle, and then you're good. Okay? So we're going to just solve several of these questions, and you'll see, like, oh, these are not too bad. They kind of make sense. Um, and actually, we've kind of done some of these before. Um, when we were studying, was this the last unit? When we did our trig unit before, we, we did questions that were kind of similar to this, but now we're just doing them in more depth. So if we did a question um, like four equals five plus tangent theta, and I wanted to get the theta alone and see what theta equals, if that theta measurement, if that um, angle measurement is between zero and two pi, uh, what could I start doing to get that theta all by itself? Yeah, subtract. I'm going to take the, um, before I take the tan away, I'm going to take the five away from both sides. So I'm just going to subtract the five. So 4 take away 5 is negative 1. So negative 1 is tan theta. And then to get the tan away from the theta, I have to um, undo the tan. And does anyone remember from math 2 how we undo a tan? There's kind of a clue on your calculator. If you look above the tan button, what do you see? Yeah, tan negative 1, which is tan inverse. So the opposite of plus is minus. Those are inverse operations. The opposite of multiply is divide. Those are inverse operations. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. Those are inverse operations. And so the opposite of tan is tan inverse. That's how you undo a tan. So if I want to get rid of a tan, I just have to do tan inverse of the tan, that's going to cancel it out, and then I have to tan inverse the other side. So tan inverse, tan inverse. Now I could type in tan inverse on the calculator, but since we're looking for answers that are on the unit circle, I'm just going to go ahead and look on the unit circle for this answer. So this is telling me find the angle measurement on the unit circle where tan would equal negative 1. And we know that tan is the simplified version of the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. 
So we're going to grab our unit circles and we're going to look at the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. And I want the version where the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate equals negative 1. Where on the unit circle does the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate equal negative 1? Say it again. So 315. And they, they said in the instructions between 0 and 2 pi, so I'm not going to use 315. What am I going to use? Yeah, 7 pi fourths, and then where else? 3 pi fourths. So those are the two places where the radian measurement um, corresponds with points, x and y coordinates, where if you did the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate, it would simplify to become negative 1. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're going to say theta equals 3 pi fourths and 7 pi fourths because y divided by x equals negative 1. So theta equals 3 pi fourths and 7 pi fourths. Okay, let's try another one. Let's say we have negative 9 halves equals negative 5 plus cos theta. What should I do? I should add the 5. Negative 9 halves plus 5, that would be 10 halves, so negative 9 halves plus 10 halves is 1 half, 1 half is cos theta, okay, how do I get rid of the cos? I do the inverse, so cos inverse cos inverse. So theta all alone is cos inverse of one half. And so basically I'm telling myself look at the unit circle, find the angle where a specific coordinate is one half. And since this is cos, what coordinate should be one half? The x coordinate. So where on the unit circle is the x coordinate one half? Pi thirds, five pi thirds, okay? So theta equals pi thirds, five pi thirds, okay? All right, let's do negative 4 equals 2 sine theta. Mm, sorry, let me flip those around. That was going to be an undefined answer. I don't want it to be an undefined answer. So I'm going to switch it. Negative 2 equals 4 sine answer will actually, negative 2 equals 4 sine theta will actually give us an answer. So let's go ahead and do that instead. Negative 2 equals 4 sine theta. Okay. So what should we do? Divide by 4. Divide by 4. Okay, so what do we get over here? Negative 1 half equals sine theta. Okay, how do I get the theta all alone? Inverse. inverse. Okay, so I'm going to do sine inverse, sine inverse. So sine inverse of negative 1 half is theta. And what am I looking for on the unit circle? 
I'm looking for a y coordinate because this says sine. So I'm looking for a y coordinate that is negative one half. And y coordinates that are negative one half, seven pi six and eleven pi six. Okay. So theta is seven pi six, eleven pi six. Okay. All right, now every so often they'll throw one at you that looks kind of crazy, but it's actually not as bad as you'd think. So this one we've got negative four plus cos theta equals negative eight minus root three over two. It looks bad, but it's gonna be fine. like move it to the front. It doesn't matter where the fraction is. I would deal with the fraction first though. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, Carly had a good point. Let's deal with the fraction first and her idea was to split it into two fractions. So if you split it into two fractions, what would they look like? Minus root three over two. Okay, what was the benefit of splitting it into two fractions? Yeah, this is a whole number now. And this, that's recognizable, right? That's on the unit circle. So it took it from something that looks gross into something that looks like, oh, that's a unit circle problem now. I can actually kind of see what's happening. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the beginning of the problem. Uh, we know that negative 8 over 2 is negative 4. Okay. So now that we fixed that fraction on the right, what do you guys think we should do? Yeah, add that 4 over. Get rid of that. So cos theta is negative root three over two. And then how do we get the theta all alone? We're gonna inverse, cos inverse, cos inverse. So theta is cos inverse of negative root three over two. And so what are we looking for on the unit circle? We're looking for an x coordinate that is negative root three over two. Okay, five pi six and seven pi six. Okay. Okay, I've got one more um, of the sine cosine tangent problems for you before I show you some of the other trig functions. So uh, this is number five. Okay, so for this next one, we're gonna do um, negative two sine theta equals negative two. Nope, sorry, we're gonna do cos. Sorry guys, it brings up something specific that I want it to bring up. Okay, negative two cos theta negative two. 
Okay, so what should I do? Divide by negative 2. So cos theta is 1. Okay, and then what should I do? Cos inverse. So theta is cos inverse of 1. So what are we looking for on the unit circle? We're looking for where 1 is the x coordinate. And where does that happen? OK, at 0 and where else? 2 pi, 0 and 2 pi. OK, so we're going to write down theta is 0 and 2 pi. But if we look at the instructions that we wrote for these example problems, 2 pi is not included. So based off the instructions, it says 0, theta can equal 0, but theta can't equal 2 pi. Everyone see that? So whenever you land in that exact spot, 0 is a valid answer, 2 pi is not a valid answer, which would mean that in a testing situation, a quizzing situation, 2 pi would be marked wrong. Does that make sense? It's in the right spot. I got you that it's in the right spot, but you're not paying close enough attention to the instructions. Does that make sense? It's a really common wrong answer to not notice that it's a coterminal angle, but not the angle that is being looked for. So that's something to watch out for. So on our notes, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cross out the 2 pi. It's not the answer we want. The 0 is the answer we want. That's something to be really careful of. So it's in the right spot, it's just not in the interval. Okay, uh, let's do a couple of the ones with the cosecant, secant, um, and cotangent. So let's try this one. We'll do negative 6 secant theta equals negative 4 root 3. Okay, so what should we do? Divide by negative 6. Divide by negative 6. So secant theta is what? So there's definitely a root 3 on top, right? And then what are the numbers? 2 over 3. Is there a negative in there or should it be positive? Positive. Okay. So secant corresponds to what? Cosine. So we're looking for an x coordinate. And this is the flipped version of what? 2 root 3 over 3 is the flipped version of what? Root 3 over 2, right? It's not the flipped version of 1 half. It's not the flipped version of root 2 over 2. So this is the flipped version of root 3 over 2, and somebody fixed it and made it so that it didn't have a radical on the bottom. OK, so if this is secant, secant is the flipped version. Um, it corresponds to cos, and it's the flipped version of root 3 over 2. So what are we looking for on the unit circle? We're looking for an x-coordinate, because this corresponds to cos. We're looking for an x-coordinate of root 3 over 2. OK, so look on the unit circle. We're looking for an x-coordinate of root 3 over 2, pi 6 and 11 pi 6. OK, so theta equals pi 6 and 11 pi 6. And I got a little bit ahead of myself there. What step did I skip? 
the inverse. I didn't do the inverse. So secant inverse, secant inverse. Okay. Okay, let's try another one. So we got negative 4 root 2 equals 4 secant theta. What do we do? Divide by 4. So we have secant theta equals... What do we get over here? Negative root 2. Okay. And then um, what do we do? Inverse. We do inverse. So secant inverse, secant inverse. So theta equals secant inverse of negative root 2. Okay. So secant corresponds to cos negative root 2 is the flipped version of what what must have been flipped to get negative root 2 negative root 2 over 2 is what would have been flipped and then simplified to get negative root 2 Okay, so cos corresponds to secant. Negative root 2 over 2 is what they flipped. So we're going to look at the unit circle. And what are we looking at on the unit circle? X values of negative root 2 over 2. Three pi fourths, five pi fourths. Okay. So theta equals three pi fourths, five pi fourths. Okay. How do we feel about doing these ones? Do we kind of see how the trick works? So you're not going to see those exact numbers on the unit circle. You have to think about what would have been on the unit circle to get those answers. Does that make sense? You're not going to see those answers on the unit circle. You have to think about what would have been there to get those answers. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. So the assignment that I have for you has problems like this. They are the same level of difficulty. It's possible we even did one of them um, something very similar to one of them uh, when we did these example problems. So I'm going to go ahead and pass these out. This is all I have for you today. I don't have any more notes. I don't have another concept to learn, just this. Um, and then I th I'm pretty sure I'm updated.